Thank you. Will you I move to approve the agenda as presented? Who needs? Made inspection to approve the agenda. This uh, resolution, I don't see it on the agenda. Is there something we're going to talk about this yeah. randomly? The administrator is just going to let you know what's happening with that. Okay. Motion made and second to approve the agenda. All in favor? Say aye. aye. Approval of the minutes from the June 8th, 23. Move to approve them. All in favor. Motion made and second to approve the minutes of the June 8th meeting. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Carry. Public comment? No public. Okay. Just give you an update on, I believe you may have copies of this uh, resolution. Uh, this is a resolution that uh, discussions with the sheriff, both Don, Leah, and myself on an issue that we've been thinking about for a couple of years now, and that is improving security. Okay. In the government center. We've had situations in the past where different groups have come in or a person has gotten out of hand or whatever. And a, a great idea that was brought forward from uh, the, doc and the sheriff was we could, in, in improving our security over here, going from uh, Permar, which we have out there. And instead, hiring two additional correctional officers at basically a budget neutral situation this year, uh, and have one of those correctional officers stationed over there and one over here. So uh, we think that will provide and we'll keep the security metal detectors over here, but over there we'll have a, a, an additional correctional officer who will be able to roam the facilities and so on. Would you still have one at uh, here as well? At the judge. Yes, right judge. out here. Right. So I wanted you all to just see this, to be aware of it, because it doesn't <clears throat> deal with the uh, public safety. Uh, but it, I think it's a very smart way to deal with, with keeping our budget under control, but two, improving security. Um, more and more. Um, I haven't seen that draft, but I get it. Oh, yeah, John, I've read it. That's been one of the things I brought up in years. Yeah. In years. Has everybody seen it? I can go get you a couple of copies. I, I read it. I asked mine on the phone. But I just wanted you to be aware of it. We'll, we'll get into a more in depth debate at uh, general government. And then uh, <laughs> the, the, the board meeting in July, we'll discuss it. So we can, the reason we have the resolution is because it deals with FTEs, but it, you know, we're changing that, but it is budget neutral that next year, you know, we'll have fun <clears> in place with the hopefully additional shared revenue and we can align our budget. Appropriately. But we wouldn't short the, the system, they'd be new hires to make up for that. Yeah. We're hiring two new people to place Parmar here and have graduate funds. Thank you. And we don't have to act on this as on a recommendation of any kind for the, the regular meeting in July. Yeah, and <laughs> the general government will do that. Wait, but I just wanted to give you all an update. And this will be basically handled through the budget and that, that thing. Yeah. All right. Wait. Wouldn't you want a resolution of the public protection in regard to this? Well, we we just we needed it from one committee, and because of the timing, it worked better for us to go through general government as well as the fact that it deals kind of with uh, you know FTEs and so on. <laughs> general government is now like the personnel and yeah, finance I understand. Committee. I think yeah. I would think maybe some kind of a from our committee. Yeah. It's not on your agenda, is the problem. Right. So, we, 
I just drafted this yesterday or the day before. So the timing right. wasn't. And timing wise, we wanted to get these folks trained and, and up and running when the, the window of opportunity is there in terms of training. It can be in the minute that we reviewed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the acronym? DAT. It, it's supposed to say draft. I think if you look on the second page, you'll see the R and the A. Oh, no. The R and the F. I mean, I don't know why my printer printed it that way oh. instead of a light. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> that wasn't me there. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. Yeah, then we got an update from Mr. Norby. Any pictures of 65 yet? Not yet. 65, they just started dating last Thursday, starting from the south end on their first lift. So it's going low. So opportunity, I have several weeks of opportunity to, um, to uh, get you photographs of that. So, um, first on our agenda is the uh, contract with. Um, WCHA and the ELRA program. Um, this has to do with the ELRA program currently right now under statute and administrative code 206. The county highway administrator has the does the administration for the towns and villages for that program. Uh, the, the WTA, the Towns Association and Omega Municipalities want to take over administration of this pilot program. Um, this next biennium cycle, which would be 2023 to 2025. Uh, uh, we're part of the pilot program. If anything in the pilot program shifts, it comes back to the highway commissioners to um, administer again. Right now, we get back, we get uh, $6,900 to administer this program, um, which doesn't cover a lot of times. Uh, uh, we were on a call with the uh, president of WTA, Mike Colas. Um, Steve was on that call with us with Brad Olson, president of the Towns Association for Polk County. At this point, uh, we're here for to see if um, we have concurrence from the committee to have me sign this contract to go into this pilot program. Again, right now it's it's uh, if anything fails in the pilot program, it comes back to us. It comes back to me anyways. Um, the the only Core part of this was the Towns Association of Legal Municipalities did a very poor job of getting this out to their constituents. Uh, kind of under secrecy, he wanted us to do that. There's been a lot of emails out there that Mr. Colas, we're going to pull the pilot program now in the Northwest because Ashland won't sign, saying that their commissioner did a poor job selling the program, which they're the ones requesting this pilot program. For us, we have a good relationship with our towns and our municipalities with the LRA program. Um, but when they take this pilot program over, they'll be taking over all aspects of it. The, the current pro, uh, road programs that are out there, uh, any projects that are current, we can move on in the future for this time period. Is it the feedback that I'm getting, obviously, from the towns is that we're pretty damn satisfied with the way things are going now. and. And, but in order to uh, be a member of this pilot program, it would probably be to our advantage to keep track of what what they're proposing, what they're attempting to. Uh, I don't know what they can prove person here in Pocono, but I mean, you guys have done a great job. Way back when Steve here, that's a long time ago. <laughs> Seems like it, it doesn't pay. I mean, the amount of time spent on the program that when I was doing it didn't pay for the time that you spent. Oh. And that's basically what Mo is saying. There was a lot of confusion at that meeting. We sat there for two and a half hours, I think, listening to all the questions and complaints. And when we got done, town representatives were satisfied that this is pilot program right. is the way we should go for right now and try it. So, well, you uh, need a motion then to move that on? 
think we just need a motion authorizing you to sign the agreement. Right. I'll make a motion to sign the agreement to participate in the program. <laughs> Made and seconded to approve signing of the contract with the Delaware River Administration Agreement. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ashland is extremely influential. <laughs> Any questions? Um, next on the agenda is a uh, project update. Then Budget talk and then uh, update on the recycling. Go over. Go over a little bit of stuff. This is some project photos of what we got going on here. This is from the Parks and Facilities Department. We're working on cracks in the um, parking lots. Um, the middle picture is from D.D. E. Kennedy working on the paths there. We are looking at getting quotes on resurfacing those paths up in D.D. E. Kennedy, one of our projects. Well, this is kind of before and this is after after it's been edged. Um, we were able to get both the Gandhi and the Stour have been now mowed and sprayed for weeks, ready to go before 4th of July weekend. Next slide. Road projects completed so far. This is County Road V on your right and County Road P on your left. Um, this was a local road improvement program there, a discretionary project. We, uh, Got an additional 350,000 for that project um, from the other program for that one. So that one went very well. Um, on Road V, we did half of V currently right now. The other half is scheduled for uh, next year, depending on uh, funding for that. Uh, next slide. Uh, also, we've been busy putting in culverts. Some of the larger culverts we've been putting in here. Um, on Road J down there on your left. That culvert is an 84 inch culvert, um, one piece, um, 60 feet long. Now, with the large culvert we put in there, whereabouts on J? Uh, north of Clear Lake on Double J. Oh, Double J, that's on Double J there in that first big dip. <clears throat> okay, there. uh, this is on uh, Stub B out of Clayton, um, in a walk, uh, lowered those culverts to help drive some wetland with DNR to get back where it was uh, before. We have approximately 60 culverts on the schedule right now. Um, we're probably a third of the way through those already. There are three culverts there? There's three there. There's three large 36 inches there. Thank you. But, and also, we've been working on uh, doing some stuff with the fair up at the fairgrounds. They have, they have problems and issues with uh, water coming into the small animal barn. Uh, they had a contractor coming in with a concrete floor in that. Uh, Facility. We then came back in and re ditched around it to make sure the water would go around the facility. This was taken after a couple of weeks ago that heavy rain on a Sunday. It was taken the next day. You can see we don't have any residual going back over there. So it worked out really well on that one. Next slide. This here is what's happening above us. This is the Justice Center the Roof Project. This is a Indication of some of the bad areas we found where um, the roof was leaky. Next slide. <clears throat> so they come back in here, um, get it right down to the deck, replace the foam insulation, the boards on top, and come back with that. Next slide. And you can see here different stages uh, of the process. This stage right here is just before they add the final rock where they flood that with uh, uh, asphalt material and then flood it back with rock again. There is um, now the metal flashing to go on, and the company that's doing the metal flashing for uh, the roofing company is actually Bristol, that's uh, across the street here. So that's an in town company that's doing the uh, metal work on that. Is that all done within budget? Yes. Right now, we're, we're currently under um, within budget on that. Our wet spots are within our contingency and our um, allowance we put aside for uh, any damage we find. Next slide. Lucky there. So, um, getting a little bit into starting into the budget, uh, budget process and how we're going on projects, uh, we have a lot of programs out there right now. Just released this last week, we have the uh, transportation alternative program TAP grant got released with um, that's more like trail grants, uh, safe uh, walks to schools. Uh, the HISIP, the Highway Safety Improvement Program, that got released again 
uh, last week, along with the service transportation bridge, rural and local. All these are, are great funding tools. Most of them all come with matching grants. Uh, one of our highlights though, are these two bridges right here, 50s, uh, 75th Street and 50th Avenue, uh, Town of Lincoln and Town of Blackbrook. Those are the ones we got 100% funding for. Um, uh, we're out right now for proposals for that, so I'll be coming back with those proposals for you guys to score here in the next couple of weeks again. So I think an engineering firm for those um, out there. It did cost Lincoln five hundred dollars. That I'm sure. You were glad dollars. <laughs> uh, the bridges we have going right now, uh, County Road B. Uh, that bridge right now, we have a pre-con meeting Monday on that bridge. That bridge is scheduled now in August to go forward. County Road K is around the same time frame. We're doing a rehab study on County Trunk Highway D. Uh, County W, H, and 357th are all in design. Bless you. Um, County Road F, the few lane. Um, they've done the surveying on that. That is a rural, a rural highway program for paving from 65 to view lane. Um, we're in the uh, survey and ADT count, uh, looking at the pavement design of that one. That gets built in 2026. Uh, County Road B is an SDAP rural. It was from the BIL pro uh, process that got passed. That one got advanced to next year. That's a fast moving project. That does have a cost share to it. That cost share for the county next year is $847,000 right now estimated with that. And that's not part of our construction. That and I'll get to that when we talk about budgets. Uh, County Road uh, B87 to Atlas E and T. These are ones I'm applying for. I had those applications in for the last cycle, and I'll be applying for those again if we don't get those in the fall. Um, I have six bridges, uh, local and county, that now qualify for the bridge program. That'll be I'll reach out to the towns to see if they want to go into the program which I hope they do because that 100% funding is still out there for some of these bridges on the local side um, to take advantage of some of this stuff out there. But a lot of those rehab reports that have to get going right away. So I'll be working on that because all those, all these programs, their applications are due in October. Um, so we've got a lot of uh, stuff moving on in there. The other one is the bridge program right now is structured over 20 feet uh, that qualify for a bridge in the federal program. The state in their budget, they passed uh, $12.5 million to start surveying uh, structures under 20 feet. Uh, the county has approximately five of those. Uh, we just don't know how many the towns have. So it'll be encompassing and trying to get all that data back with that. Um, one of the challenges of these, or naturally, as we get into the budget, is the cost share component of that and how do we come up with that cost share. Because with these programs here, um, our crews aren't working on these projects. We're not running our equipment. They're not gaining revenue. We're not having our men work to offset the revenue of the normal levy. So that becomes very um, impactful. And again, with our transportation aid, we want to make sure that um, the patients kept where we're going. Uh, how do we get more highways, uh, dollars for highways and infrastructure? You know, we're looking at uh, bonding. We've been working with administration. They asked us to come up with a plan for uh, with our debt service falling off, we have that capability of bonding for more money um, without raising our levy. Um, so we came up with a program to offset that every other year from highway to facility to help cover these large projects up the roof or not um, with that. So, and our goal was to do that without with maintaining a flat levy for our residents so we don't have to bond outside of that. Well, what's the... Uh... Do we have a bonding figure now? We do have a bonding figure. It's, it's around 1. Uh, 1. 1.2 to 1.5 million. I'm in the ballpark. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> our advisors will update that, update us on our exact amount based on current interest rates whenever we decide to bond. But that's that's a good approximation 1.2 to 1.5. I'm in the ballpark. So that's what we've kind of done with our CIPs. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit just so you see how we're looking at it. I think many years we had between five and ten million dollars bonding that we would carry. Mm -hmm. And I think Don, with, when they go over their presentation, they'll show how it's dropping off with the highway facility coming off and how our debt's being paid down to allow us to have this flexibility with 
Next slide. Current budget status 2023. Um, you know, while well, coming out of the winter, and I'm just talking now January, May when the winter ended. Uh, right now, uh, it's been tough. We're 23% over on our state uh, uh, contract right now for winter maintenance. Uh, some of the things uh, that we're trying to mitigate as we budgeted for 2023. <laughs> But in, uh, $707,000 approximately for winter materials. Uh, we spent $748,000 in winter materials just in the first part of this year. Good news is, though, our sales are up $241,000. You know, so we made money on our sales. We still have November and December to come into with that. Um, we're working hard for that. Uh, coming into 2024, uh, salt is up approximately 8.3%. Uh, which um, for us is approximately a $51,000 increase. But again, that depends. We, we, we order approximately it's about three quarters of a million dollars in, in salt. It all depends on what year I order it. If I order it before December naturally comes out of the 23 budget, if I order it after January, it all comes out of the um, 2024 budget. Is that all salt that you use specifically in the county or is that some of the salt that we use? That's part of the salt that um, is uh, mixed up and sold to the town. So in other words, then that isn't totally our budget. We've got you got money coming. Correct. I have to balance that with sales from others yeah. and come back on that. So that outlay is not always that entire amount. So if you purchase a lot yeah. more salt, then that would be a lot better. Right. <laughs> um, you know, so I went from 83. 63 a ton to 91.16 a ton. This year we ordered, we're going to order about 8,100 um, tons. Right now our sheds are pretty empty after coming out of this one. They're, they're running out of materials. So we're trying to balance all those out. Um, you know, it's one of those things like sales feathers we do. Uh, the 2022 budget year, our levy was 3.4 million, and we, we gave cash back to suppliers. and for goods and services back to the private sector, 3.8, you know, so we give that back to people. Um, some of the highlights for 2024 coming out of there, um, in 2024, ATV mileage is up. The government passed that bill, it went from $600 a mile reimbursement to $800 a mile, so we're gonna add that to the 2024 budget. That helps. Um, we are looking at grants for the ATV park, Apple River Campground, uh, a couple of grants for recycling. Uh, looking good. Uh, some of these are looking really positive. The ATV um, park grant that's looking very positive. The campground one is very competitive, so I'm not clear on that one. That's a 50-50 grant project. It's about $180,000. Again, $90,000. Where are we sitting with the hat? Uh, right now, the plans are at DNR for review, and hopefully this fall we're going to get three. Uh, so we're there done yet this fall. But you do have a final draft for the Atlas Dam, yes. The plans for the the um, Clan Falls Dam are due to uh, DNR August first. What percent with an anticipated drawdown? What percent of funding there do we have? Yeah, Atlas Dam, hundred percent of funding. I want to say it's a 50-50 cost shit on that one. The project was set at one hundred and fifty thousand. <throat> that was a uh, that was a cost share on that one. A lot of fishing people want to know about that. Oh, the Atlas one. <laughs> you know, so we're balancing all these things. Some of the things in the twenty twenty four budget are the CISA, the CISA school building, the HVC and the boiler replacement, thirty windows in the Justice Center here. That was a request from the, um, the judges. So. <clears throat> Uh, bulletproof glass at our counters. Uh, County Road JJ, that's a that's a LRIP supplement project. We have a grant for that for an extra $393,000. Again, County B is an $8,870,000 county share. Um, and then other funding issues uh, with that. Uh, next slide. Uh, Extra funding requests for 2024. Um, we've gotten them from the fairgrounds. One was for a roof on 
the show barn for for seventy five thousand dollars. We found another uh, alternative to repair that roof. We can do it for cheaper for thirty five thousand uh, dollars. They they have requested ten thousand dollars for LED lights, uh, and their other request was to install Wi Fi uh, at various locations in there. We have very little on that project. Um, I denied that request at this point. We have no plans on that. I think that plan needs to be co uh, collated with the PA system and if they're going to run fiber in these buildings and not mix these together, it's not part of the facility, the infrastructure at this point. What they were looking at here was kind of like spot to spot hanging receivers on different farms to try to get Wi-Fi throughout that. And there needs to be a little more planning involved now when we move forward with money. Otherwise, um, the security windows, we're looking for the security glass in the Justice Center, we're looking at well, 175,000. The boilers, we're looking at 122,000. Uh, the AC, we're looking at 133,000. The Bobcat tool cap for facilities, that was um, to replace the skid steer with a different machine would be more viable for uh, what they do. Uh, the recycling center was another replacement for a truck that has over 300,000 miles on it and the gear doesn't work. Uh, we have one that should be going in the shop that we purchased two years ago that finally come in and going in to get the hook put back on it. So it's taking a while to get that one back on. Uh, parks and trails, 180,000 for the restroom. Again, that would be a $90,000 county share if we get the grant for that. That's the bathroom upgrade. The, um, One's a replacement dock, uh, regraveling some sour and replacement truck for parts, and replacing a lawnmower with a bagger, kind of standard on those. But those are in there. It's hard to read on the PowerPoint. I did do a supplement where you can see those, um, but that's where we're sitting kind of on the budget. Next slide. With that, I showed with the bonding, we looked at every other year uh, with Don on. 24, 26, 28 highway, 25, 27 in facilities. What we were looking at in highway for the bonding was county double C and uh, a cost share for the county B project. I only have $3 million in my uh, fund balance at the moment. So that goes not that far if I can take big chunks out of there like that. So um, one of the, if we, Decide to go a different method than bonding, or well, then we'll have to work the CIPs to look at projects falling on um, and sending them out the past year if it's a domino effect as they move down the line. Next slide. So, for facilities, we're looking at the opposite years. Again, the number of uh, 1.2 million uh, was the, the chiller in the Justice Center in this building. It's due for replacement. Um, it's not broke yet, but this is the time to replace it. And then out in 27 was re-roofing uh, Endeavors, building across the parking lot, and then the roof on the school at 65. Uh, next slide. Uh, this was parks. Uh, the big one here was Apple Road Campground Restroom, was just the big outlier on that one. Uh, the rest of it, there is money built into the budget to get uh, a lot of the smaller ones. That's why you don't see a lot of smaller funding requests in there, because we do um, carry money in the budget now to help for maintenance and get through with facilities and that number. That's kind of how we're approaching the budget this year and what we're moving forward with. Next slide. Recycling center on the budget uh, on here. We got two bids for the recycling center project. Uh, Mark and Johnson and Birdhammer Builders out of Clear Lake was the two bidders. Uh, we had three alternates listed in the bid process. One was for a 500 gallon waste oil tank. Uh, the second alternate was a precast concrete building. Uh, how is that tank outside versus building a stick structure? The next one was fire suppression to the building. This is sprinkler in the building with city water. It's not required by code, but being the commodities that we have inside, and you've seen the fires on the moon when the stuff plastic starts to burn. Um, if that came in within budget, it was um, a good idea to do. So the total bill, bid from Mark and Johnson was 2.5 million 29. Um, and Bert Hammers was 2.2864. So we're moving forward on the contract process with Bert Hammer Builders. They're eager to get going here. We're just getting everything lined up and run the contract to the council. 
uh, to make sure everything's in line with that. So we're able to get all these items in here. Get our right now our waste oil tank is inside the building, uh, right where the trucks come in and everything between the conveyors. In that gets it to the back side of that building. I do have a meeting uh, Wednesday the 12th to go through um, the hearing with St. Croix Falls again on their um, their instrument. And then we did receive our conditional permit and um, from the state for construction for the project. We did our uh, conditional permit for that uh, yesterday in the mail. So we're moving forward with that and everything seems to be on track. Next slide. Oh, you mentioned the school over there. Is that what uh, North Bay? Yes. That rent from us? Yes. The pay is good enough rent that we can keep it proper. Uh -huh. Sure, sure. Yeah. Would you like me to address that? You want to address it? Yeah. Uh, we love the fact that the college is there. Exactly. And uh, I think the question is whether you know, there's offsetting value. They pay under market rent, and we will we can demonstrate how much under market uh, at a later date if you'd like that. We collect that information. They also have a contract that uh, right now they're basically paying for leasehold improvements on the building. So we're not actually getting any rent money from them. They're paying down the investment that we made to rehabilitate the building for their use over many years ago. That's what I meant was the <coughs> roof. Be considered in that. Well, I'm afraid it's not. So, uh, you know, I think we are under discussion with CISA about what the rent should be in the future. And we may have an opportunity to have that same discussion with, uh, with Northwood, but their contract is more ironclad than one we've got with CISA because they've got this ability to pay down that this whole improvement over time. I think our projection was they've got about 25 years left to pay that off before we start getting any rent. And that's at the very highly subsidized rate of $7,200 a year. So 25 years from now, we'll start getting rent from them. It'll be $7,200 a month, or we'll renegotiate. No, we'll take that in and You vote on that when it comes up. I wasn't criticizing the project. I no. just wanted the information. Oh, no, very good. And uh, I'm glad we've got it. There. Exactly. I think that's an appropriate way to look at it. I mean, we've got to keep the building up to snuff, right? Sure. We've got to take care of the roof. But... We want to do everything to keep it here. Is that, I would think. Is our storage building intact? The building behind? Yeah. The building? Yes. Uh, the two sheds down there? Yeah, they're fully intact. We actually insulated one um, area now that we expanded parts. We insulated one of the bays in that and um, got heat in there so they uh, have a better workspace too. Oh, yeah. Good job. But that's kind of a, any other question. That's how we're sitting on the budget right now. That's what we're moving forward with at this time. Uh, um, I did give you the um, CIPs on a separate one, so if they were hard to read on. You. Uh... Do you anticipate anything on shared revenue? I'm going to be going up to the counties and having a lot of talk about shared revenue. Quite sure on the shared revenue. I'd be happy to have that. Yeah. Uh, so the most recent uh, information we've got there's $566,000 in additional shared revenue coming from the state to the county, uh, but there's stipulations about what it can be spent on. Uh, and important stipulations uh, for the purpose of this committee, public uh, works projects, infrastructure projects are okay, as are anything related to public safety, also ports. So we're currently looking at how to split that $566,000 up, but the vast majority would go to projects that are related or operations related to these to your committee, just because of the way the, the legislation is. I mean, it is a it is a plus we had. One way to look at it is, if uh, for the round numbers would be about a quarter of a million going to law enforcement, about a quarter of a million going to public works, and the balance going to ports transportation, which are the other two designated areas. 
Alex had budget for years on shared revenue. Yeah. Um, We'll stop and take a look at the Cushing Fire Hall roof there. That's what the fair roofs will look like. Mm -hmm. Outstanding process. See the future of steel room. Third or so the cost. It's very reasonable. We got the bid back on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and look in the back of my truck. I have a spray of board for it. But... What they do over there? <clears throat> uh, they acid etch the whole roof. And they, re, they yeah they reattach all the loose fasteners, then they put a primer on it, and then they put uh, coating of material over it with like fiber in it, so it reestablishes the seal of the roof. Then my house. Then they have a longer guarantee. Twenty years. What's the cost of the roof on this bill? Two point four million. Steel. We budgeted 2.6 and it came in just under 2. Point, right around 2.4. And right now it's holding within the budget. Mm -hmm. Question, Don, when you say you're gonna you're tentatively have that money split quarter of a million, quarter of a million. Who determines how that money is used then? Well, part of it is through the budget process, an additional funding request. Uh, so uh, possibility would be for some of that money to be spent on the corrections officers that will be discussed at general government. That would be one idea. Well, those got some ideas about how the public works uh, would be spent. Well, it doesn't have to be approved before we spend it. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's, part of the, it's as part of the budget process. So we'd have to have whatever it is, it'd have to be approved first. Is there, right? It, it, if I could, it, it is 2024 money, so we won't run it. Coming up. So it, it's uh, no different than any other budget money. Except for that it has to go to those categories that are specified in the legislation. Okay. Well, what did you see that the drawdown be? We, we do not have a date yet. We're, we're anticipating this fall to help keep the uh, dry down over the winter to help with the milfoil um, and the flowage, and then um, start construction as soon as we can in the spring. Still no argument when they're going to have the final decision on the Tower Trail. <laughs> I have to defer to corporate counsel on that. No, we got an email last week uh, indicating that one of the decisions was done, but the judge is working on the other decision because remember there's two cases and yeah. we would not be releasing the one decision until he completes the other decision. That's the latest. There's probably vacation in between there. <laughs> I don't know, but take no time. Any other questions for Moe then? Thank you. All right. Um, update the share of walk. All right. Well, purpose of the meal today was to show you that the food is edible in the jail. And we uh we have you know a food contract through Summit Foods. And with inflation, as you know, that contract had to get renegotiated. And through the work of Don Burroughs and Don Wortham and myself and our jail staff, administrative staff, we got that. I think we got a pretty good number out of them. You know, they were they were basically running at an even, like and maybe slightly below. So we it was a thirty five percent increase on the food contract, but uh, they are they needed to do that. They were losing money on the, with inflation. You know, everything has gone up. So. The board had forethought of thinking of that potential overages in some areas with inflation and that. So that's one area where we where we were good. We had an uptick in that. But anyway, the food is um, it's like similar to what you'd find in a school lunch program. It's it's edible. I think we've had we don't have a lot of complaints on it, so it's good positive. Good balance. Yes. Um, July fourth was 
pretty smooth through Polk County. Can't say the same for our neighbors. Uh, we were involved in investigating a shooting that occurred in Burnett County. We were, re we were requested to look into that, and I can't comment on it because we are uh, involved in that as far as investigating it. But they had an well, officer. Yeah. You know, they had an officer involved shooting up there also. Comply. They have, to have an outside agency, and now that's the second one this summer we're involved in. So there's been a lot of chaos around us. We hope it stays away from us. Um, I want to compliment Chief Deputy Don Burroughs on June 9th. He graduated from the Wisconsin Command College. He's a certified public manager now, so that's a, a good accomplishment on his on his part. A lot of work went into that. So congrats, Don. What can we expect out of you? Don doesn't want me to be too public about that, so that's why I'm doing it here. Versus a big, I was going to do a big press release, and he wouldn't give up the photos that we had taken at the ceremony. So he's a modest person that way. He's always got that thread of going farmer in his dad. Project in Iowa. After the meeting today, I look forward to the tour, and the purpose of the tour is to show uh, the facility and that it's a, a very well-run, professionally uh, run operation. And we did our, last month, we had our state jail inspection, and that was a, we didn't have any negative marks. And that is such a thorough inspection, as you recall, in the past, there was, if a food canister didn't get labeled when they opened it for a date and whatnot, that's how particular they are on the inspection. So. We had a great inspection this past year, which really is a, which is great on the staff. Um, Melissa and her team back there do a, an absolute amazing job. So I'm excited to show the facility off today. That's that's next. And Don Wortham, I would encourage you, if you haven't been through there, take, you know, it's not a long tour, what, probably 20, 30 minutes max. You just do a walkthrough. And, and it, it is eye-opening to see that back there. It is not chaotic. It's actually a very smooth run facility. I look forward to that. Any questions? Jerry's not upset that she didn't get the contract like no. the old Jerry. Well, in fact, we do have a, one of the deputies is a former chef, and he's trained as a chef. So when his food contract was up for grabs and they, they had the potential to pull out of the contract, they said, well, we do have a, a staff member who is a chef, but I don't think he would have been interested in that. <laughs> right. Thank you. Any, any questions? No. Moving along with the supervisor rally with the with the updates with everything going on today. We canceled meetings and reports. See emails from the club that they were out working on the trails today. And I'll ask Rob if he maybe could fill in what it is they're working on. With the heavy rains last week, I we had Quite a few washouts on the camp trail, so they're out working, fixing those. And um, my folks are out there along with the club working on this. Camp trail is the only trail that we have issues with with washouts like that. So we're going to try to work with the club on how they're grading and grooming it to try to rectify that. Yeah, update procedure. So in June, we had one person in our substance diversion program, one new referral, and one termination. First time offender, we had one participant and one new referral. The intoxicated driver intervention program, that's for the OWI seconds and thirds, we had 12 with one new referral and one graduation. Treatment court, we had eight and six new referrals. So that keeps us pretty busy. Um, it's looking like so far all six may be eligible. So that will be, we'll definitely have our hands full of a bunch of people in stage one because it's very difficult when people first start treatment court and you're trying to break some of those habits. Um, we also had Heather Kierzik. She is the director of the from the state with the problem solving course, and she came and did a role training for a treatment court. 
had some good feedback for us. And um, Judge Tolan, who oversees our treatment court, believes that the team is operating at the best it has been um, since he's been part of it. So things were going pretty smooth in June. Questions, anybody? Next graduation? Um, <laughs> so we thought we might be having a graduate early September, but that might be delayed a little bit. So I'm anticipating October, November will be the next graduation. Good. Annual report. Anything you want to think about? Any questions? A full report. And I think we could do that in August. That's all right. Uh, it's part of the budget process is to look to see uh, back what law enforcement and public, public works has, has done. We have a pretty much of the final draft so and I, I I'd be happy to provide a budget update if folks uh, for a 30,000 foot budget update if folks would like to see that or if that's even appropriate in the agenda I don't, I don't know if it is. but I don't think it would be although there was the budget uh, section in in commissioner's report um, having said that I don't know if this Annual report was on there because it was a part of their work plan and on the work plan. I think at this step. But I think just bumping it out to when we're actually ready for it seems to make the most sense. I understood we were going to start getting some of those reports <clears throat> and cost for the department. Right. So that would be the quarterly spend for uh, the department's report up to this committee. Uh, and we do those on. Uh, Quarterly basis. So, see yeah, how we're doing. In exactly. Right. And will we provide those? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Apparently, not in the form. They must have. Sure. Somehow, I think they do. If I knew about it, it had to. Be. <laughs> if I remember it, <laughs> that's the way you remember it. Yeah, right. Hope I remember the right thing. Okay, any subject matter for next meeting? The budget update and I'd like to look at that just because we have to be nice certain that is part of the junior years. But this may be his first one we will need, but I can see what's going on. Sure. And actually, just yesterday, our new canine got his first apprehension. Oh, really? So, quite an incident. But um, yeah, there was a fugitive in the Frederick area that this is now the second time this person has been bitten by a dog. We call that a slow learner. In this <laughs> by a law enforcement dog? Yes, about a year apart. Jeez. So, yeah, the dog, the dog yesterday. Uh, did an amazing job, but I'm not. I'm not surprised. The canine school we use, St. Paul, is world class. So we're really blessed to have those resources. Absolutely, I'll try to facilitate getting the dogs in here. And the guy says, and that bus stop says, "Your dog bite?" The guy says, "No." Reaches down, the dog bit him. I said, "Your dog didn't bite." He says, "That ain't my dog." <laughs> Okay, so then we have uh, the jail tour. Will they adjourn after? I think you could adjourn now and those that want to take the tour can take the tour. Just Malia could caution about the. Yeah, don't want to talk about county business. <laughs> that is okay. pending. You can ask questions about the jail. They're always listening. Okay. You'll keep them in line, won't you, Chair? <laughs> Motion to adjourn to the jail tour. I shall move. 
Motion made and second to adjourn to the jail. To aye. Adjourn and then take the jail tour. Mayor say aye. 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 Chief, I'm on my way up.